This week, I've got a weird genre blending number one, a care package from Metal Blade Records to unbox, and a whole bunch of crushing metal for you. Welcome, metalheads. I'm the host of Heavy Metal Philosophy and writer for Metal Digest, John Barbus. Make sure you stick around to the end of the episode for this week's album art of the week. It's the weekend. That means we got new metal albums, and I'm bringing you my top five. But before we do the top five, let's talk about some of the big major releases of the week. Lamb of God have released their 20th anniversary edition of Ashes of the Wake. Astute metalheads might say. Didn't they release a 15th anniversary edition not too long ago? And that is correct. So what does the 20th anniversary have that the 15th anniversary does not? Well, how about a version of another nail in your coffin with vocals from Kubla Khan and Malevolent? Plus, there's some industrial remixes of Laid to Rest and Omerta. Those are versions that I didn't know I needed. And Deathcore Crushers Oceano have just released their new record, Living in Chaos. And then switching gears, the melodic death metal titans, Venter Sun with Time 2. And then we'll do another major gear shift, Leprous, with Melodies of Atonement. And I love this one. Let me tell you why. You know, this does not sound like other prog bands. They don't do that thing that prog bands do where they pick an exotic scale and then play single notes in an odd time signature. You know, that sort of thing. And then everybody gets a solo. None of that. Like, look how good musicians we are. It just sounds weird. And it's kind of funny that they were able to stand out from the normalcy of Prague by embracing dark pop. Cool stuff. Now let's do another major gear shift. Maybe you don't want anything to do with anything related to pop. So we'll go with nails, every bridge burning, grindcore rage. I'm telling you, if you're listening to this one, don't operate heavy machinery or drive vehicles in general. I got two more before we jump into the top five. I don't normally do EPs, but I love this next band so much. And if you're into old school metal, you love them too. Hell Ripper with Forked Tongue Messiah. Anything this guy does, I'm going to cover it because it's always awesome. And lastly, before we jump into the top five, Gojira have finally released the song that they performed at the Olympics, Mia Culpa Asara, as a single. You can now listen to it on streaming platforms. And I'm not playing the music because it's still owned by the IOC and I am terrified of them. Let's do the top five. Coming in at number five, Numa Hagion. From Beyond, Black and Death Metal out of Texas. Did I pronounce that correctly? I believe it's Latin or Greek. Here's the text on the screen just in case. And as always, every band's band camp links will be in the description so that they're easy to find. Now, I called this Black and Death. It's listed as Black and Death, but there's very little black metal on this. I just would call it evil, blasphemous death metal. And it's that filthy lip curling death metal the kind that makes you go ooh, ooh. so that's why i picked it you'll like it if you check it out coming in at number four modern rights with endless this is an international melodic black metal band and speaking of bands that'll give you stank face this one will definitely do that a lot of times black metal bands are described as being Frigid, not this band. Very modern sound to it, but not polished. They use their production to create a feeling of unease, which makes it heavy. Coming in at number three, Ami Incense Reclamation Part Two, progressive black metal. And these guys are from all over the United States, Washington State, Minnesota, Chicago. And you might be thinking, hey, that band name sounds familiar. That's because I covered these guys in April. That's right. This is the sequel to their record that they released four or five months ago. That's incredible. 
I gave that first Reclamation record a 9 out of 10 on Metal Digest, and this one is also a 9 out of 10. How do you make two bangers like that back to back in such quick succession? I don't know. But this one rules. Where the first one has that American black metal sort of Midwestern vibe going on, this one has a little bit more of a fantastical sort of thing going. But all of it with super impressive prog, but also that little tinge of evil, incredible stuff. Coming in at number two, Ancients. Beyond the Reach of the Sun, progressive metal out of Canada. Now, you're going to see a lot of people compare this band to Opeth. And I can see why. I can definitely hear why. But they don't sound like Opeth to my ears. The reason why people are saying Opeth is because they do that thing where it's clean singing and then also growling. And they can change positions that can change vibes really quickly the same way that Opeth does but it's not European folk music and the riffs are less uh, overtly prog it's got like a Canadian psychedelic groove to it what you're hearing that's making you think of Opeth is awe and when you listen to this you go oh how did they do that now, hey, before we do number one, I want to show you this awesome care package I got from Metal Blade Records. So instead of hawking my wares like I normally do, I'll just show you an unboxing here. But do remember, there's only another couple weeks left of summer, which means the summer collection on the merch store is going away. All right, let's see what we got here. There's something in the mail. <laughs> oh yes tomb of the mutilated oh i haven't even heard this one that'll be a new one to explore <gasps> blood incantation holy shit That's pretty cool, huh? I am super stoked about that. So thank you so much, Metal Blade Records. Now let's do number one. Coming in at number one, Anna Pest. Excellent band name. This is called You and Me at the End of the Fucking World. <laughs> this Canadian band defies genre. And all the time, people nowadays are saying, well, the next big trend in metal is genre blending. And I disagree because these bands that they claim are, quote, genre blending are really genre switching. They will do a metalcore verse and then have a pop chorus, but those are two distinctly different sections. They're not actually blended. They just switch. Maybe they've got like a jazzy breakdown or something like that. And then they go back to doing deathcore or whatever it is that they do. But this band is simultaneously mathcore, deathcore, uh, pop punk. I heard some thrash in there. Lots of industrial. This record is insane. There's, there's a little bit of tech deathy things, especially on the drums and the guitars. So... I just was listening to this going, now, now that's genre blending. They're doing all the genres at once, and it's crazy. But it's not just the novelty, although y'all know I love novelty. Novelty will get you a long way with me. It's not just the novelty. The songs are killer as well, and yes, it gets super weird, but it still gives me room to move my head, which is the most important thing. And speaking of important things, I got a fun dealer's choice for you and the album Art of the Week, so don't go anywhere. All right, I got a fun one for this week's dealer's choice. There resides in Canada this quirky death metal band called VHS. And every time they put out a record, it's got some sort of fun theme to it. They've done horror movie stuff. Their previous record, Quest for the Mighty Rift, was kind of Dungeons and dragon -y. It had a warrior, it had a rogue, it had a wizard. You know, I love death metal about wizards. Well, this newest record that they just released 
for a few riffs more is, you got it, a Wild West themed death theme thrash sort of record. <laughs> I love these guys. I, I just imagine these dudes up in Canada getting together, having a good time, and just thinking of something weird and being like, yeah, let's do that. And it's always a fun project. So I imagine somebody in the band was like, hey man, let's make a Clint Eastwood death metal record. And they were like, yeah, let's do it. And they got to work. I love VHS. My favorite album art this week comes from Alinda. Todd Bringer in, this is ambient black metal out of Austria. And I love this album art. Y'all know I love themes of death feeding life. And here you have this beautifully painted skeleton pouring in some sort of liquid onto the plants, death feeding life. But this band, <laughs> I went and looked at their back catalog and all of their album art looks like this. You've got a skeleton playing the fiddle on the river, all kinds of cool stuff. Absolutely thrilled with this one. I actually reviewed it for Metal Digest and I talked about how I don't normally describe black metal as comforting. And that might give you the wrong idea. This is black metal that gives you the sort of comfort like if you were staring death in the face and you said, I'm at peace. Now then, if you liked any of these bands, hit that like button right here. And if you want more heavy metal philosophy, just click right here. But most importantly, read philosophy, listen to metal. I love you. 